Nick, how can estate agents be more present in the estate agency process? Um, well, it comes back to understanding you know, what job you're there to do. So, so it counts. Indeed you are. You're not there necessarily. So inherent in your response there is, are you there to keep the shop open and sit behind the desk and make some phone calls or you know, do whatever else you might be doing? Or are you there to go and be present when a transaction is taking place? So there's a number of transactions that take place. One is when somebody asks you to sell a house for them. That's yes. kind of transaction number one because somebody's buying from you. That's good. Um, and every agent is present there. That's where the money is, so that's great, but it's not really where the money is because you don't get paid until it's uh, finished. Um, but then there's this whole part of the rest of the process that agents are not really present in, and that's the viewings uh, and the sales process and the offers and all this kind of stuff. So um, if you go and buy a house, you know, you turn up, somebody lets you in. It could be the vendor, it could be uh, somebody from the office with a key who doesn't really know the house, they don't know the vendor, they don't know, what behind, you know what's behind this door. Every uh, viewer has had an experience of that. Then you ring to make an offer. Who are you talking to? Don't know. Somebody in the office. Do they know you? Do they know the vendor? Do they know the story? Do they know how far to push the offer? Because we're all here to get the best price for the vendor. Um, so all of this stuff's disjointed and it all kind of breaks down to a certain degree. Some agents do it absolutely awesomely well. Uh, others very poorly. Um, I like to think unions are reasonably consistent on this because the franchisee is present at every single part of that process. So we make sure that nothing falls down. So um, this whole issue of presenteeism is about you know, how often is the vendor going to see the face of that guy who came to do the appraisal? Are they going to see him just once at the outset or is he going to be there when the well, keys get handed? Well, but let's be honest, the normal way of doing things in the state agency, the valuers, value, valuers and listers are quite expensive, so mm -hmm. we pay them to go and put the house on the market, yep. and then we pass it over to the NEGs and the company viewers, mm -hmm. and you'll probably never see the valuer again or speak to them. No, probably not. Are you saying that that's the wrong way to do it? I'm saying it's not the way UMOVE does it. Um, there is a place for the branch model, um, and that works clearly for quite a lot of people because there's lots of branch agents out there. Um, and the guys that deploy the, the high street branch model very well, you know, are very successful at it and so fair play to them. So there is always a place for that. What we're doing at UMOVE is kind of more of a, a sort of high-end niche uh, kind of service where we will deliver that high contact, high touch service to our vendors. And we know it delivers uh, better outcomes because we realise more money on uh, sale. We get better feedback and we get more referrals. And critically, and this is really strange and this is why I don't know why, Lots of agents don't do this. We get a significant proportion of our listings from viewers who have a house to sell. Now, if we weren't there, we wouldn't get those uh, instructions. But surely that method of, of being present at all times means that you can only grow so big? Uh, per head, yeah. So essentially you think, well, if you've got a team of, I don't know, let's say five people in your branch agent and you can balance you know, 100 properties at any one time, you know, spinning them around, you know, that might be the number, just simple maths. Um, if you're an individual UMI franchisee, you can maybe spin 20 houses at any one time. So the proportion is the same, but we're delivering a better service outcome. So are you saying so, that if there was, a, if there was, if you had a, a large branch, UMI branch, would, would, would the same person be the same value? So one value would have 20 mm -hmm. and, and everyone would have like their own? Yeah properties. That's right. So it's a little portfolio. So if you've got, so in, in my own franchise in York, for example, we've got um, four different people and they all work a different part of the town and they have a portfolio of properties in their sub-territory, if you like, and they do everything from start to finish. So the deployment is the same, but it still allows you to scale. And are you, are they employed on a self-employed basis? It's up to the local franchisee. There's a mix. Okay. Do you find that if you employ them on a self-employed basis, they take greater ownership of it? No, no. Uh, I think that really you've got to understand the, the UMOVE culture and the UMOVE brand is that we've got a number of exceptionally high performing people in our network who are employees. We've got a number of exceptionally high performing people in our network who are what we call associates who are on a self-employed basis. Yeah, they're like the hub model. And then, yeah, and then we've got the franchisees clearly who uh, do the same. So if you were a customer of UMOVE, you wouldn't know whether it was an employee, an associate or a franchise owner because 
everyone does the same thing. So is, does it really come down to the type of person, whether some people are, are motivated by being an employee, some people with the safety, mm -hmm. some are, in, are motivated for the fact that they've got skin in the game, and they're, yep. they're, they're an owner of the business mm -hmm. or part owner. Does it really come down to the type of person you've got? Absolutely right, it does, yeah. So if you've got somebody that's a little bit younger and they need the money to pay the rent and all this kind of stuff, they haven't built up an asset base yet and they can't take the risk on a lack of income, uh, they will take a lower earning rate for the security of employment, for sure. Uh, if you've got somebody that's been working for quite a few years and you know they've got a bit of cash behind them, they may take a higher earnings rate but prepared to take the risk on income fluctuating according to sales rate. And you feel that model there of... of um, taking ownership of the portfolio, and we're not talking about rental portfolio, mm -hmm. we're talking about portfolio of stuff they're selling, Correct. has greater relevance and means that the homeowners are selling their houses for more money mm -hmm. and, and are offering a better service and being offered a better service. Absolutely, that's exactly right. Yeah, so I'm quite happy to stand up and argue till I'm blue in the teeth that that is the right way to do it. Now, most agents in the UK will disagree with me and yeah, say that Why I'm don't wrong. you think most estate agents aren't doing all this? Because it's a bit harder and it's a bit less efficient okay. as far as the agent is concerned. It depends what your motivation is, whether exactly. you're just in it for the money yeah. or if you actually want to do a good job for your mm -hmm. vendors. It, well, that's precisely it. So we're, we're, our whole business, our whole business philosophy is designed from the perspective of delivering great outcomes for customers, not writing a load of deals and getting them through at any cost. That's fundamentally why we do it the way we do it. Thank you. Thank you.